way ahead of the opponent's team. And the 16 will be coming for Zealot soon. They are still three quarters away, as you were mentioning. Now, I'm trying to see a world here where we can actually have a moment for the Zealots to get into a win. And I think it comes down to that Warlord's Challenge. If they do get the engage they want and they're able to hit on Medivh and stop that Force of Will from coming out, use the Taunt, make sure he can't use that Force of Will, Zealots do have a lot of upfront damage that can be devastating. With the Spear at level 7 and then Reign of Vengeance into Vala Multishot build, you should be able to burn pretty much any target except for ETC on the opposing side. So they need to find a way to control ADRD and make him make a mistake. Which is going to be rough, but playing around cooldowns would be one way how you can try and accomplish that. If they get that burst in with a bit of lockdown and can kill a target, then Zalats definitely have what it takes to turn the momentum. But it's going to be extremely difficult considering how far behind they already are. And Team Expert, of course, is now starting to push that advantage. They play perfectly around that global, and I really love that Illidan now is to be found again at the top lane, while the rest of the team is pushing through the bot and attempting to break through the wall to open up another potential keep. Zealot's waiting for that 16, hoping for it to get here. The slowing sands making the minions be a little bit late too, so they can't push up and start to actually deal with these impalers that are pushing in on the bottom side. Bad Benny holding that front line too, trying to keep an eye on where the opposing team is with the addition of ADRD on the Medivh, and Illidan continues to keep pushing in top. Does Zealous decide to go ahead and go for the Harding Agent now? Do they move in? Because they need to with the 19 and a quarter set up for Team Expert. And just look at this minimap. The entire minimap is in the control of uh, Team Expert. They control everything except for the last row of defense, which is the Keeps here. And by now, Illidan is working on the camp to the top right. Still, Shrine spawns top as well, so this camp can easily be defeated while the Zealots move towards it. But as you already said, time's ticking as Team Expert is heading into level 20, and Zealots, they would love to take a fight right now, but I highly doubt that Team Expert is even going for the Shrine before they hit their Storm Talons. Zealots just need to push, they need to go for it. They're starting to move already to the top side. They might think this is their last chance here to actually stay in the game. And I here's agree. where it gets scary, Team Expert, they can push bottom. They can yeah. work on a keep. They don't have to do anything here. They have all the power in the world. Well, they just have to rotate Illidan down, yeah. which is exactly what they're doing again. And Illidan, of course, by now has also his level 20 upgrade. He has a Storm Talon, so we have nowhere to hide. And at this point, this I mean, this looks insane. Zealots are willing to take a 16 versus 20 talent fight. But the thing is, they have to. This is the last fight they're going to get. And they have to do it against a Crony and Mediv, who are legends at poking. But hang on, the group just come in here. Hunt comes off across the map. Mobsy will be the lockdown target as he's gotten bursted. Yeah, slowing stats immediately being used. Leyline Seal already has to follow up as we're seeing Adyar. And Mo, we have immediately ETC going in with the March Pit. The two of us, they kill against Garrosh. And now Team Expert is moving in. The Ancestral is hitting Illidan as the shield from Mediv already comes through. Zamani with a spin to win, trying to make sure that his team survives a little bit Long, but ADR you already open up another portal into the back line. That Benny moves in and drops not only Oriel, but also Sonia. Ariel and Sonya dead here. Tassadar and Vala. Well, no, nope. just Tassadar standing here. Shad, the last one standing for his team. Power Slide will end his life. <laughs> Punisher does go to the Zealots, but the top <laughs> lane is pushing in, and Team Expert starts to chunk across the map. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. You <laughs> won a Punisher, but you lost the game. Yep, game is done here with Illidan on the front line, already moving in. Keep is done. We just have Garrosh spawning at the moment, but the core is the main prize here for Team Expert as they toy with the Zealots in this matchup, get a four-level lead, and win team fights easily. 14 to zero kills. Dominant performance for sure. 20 versus 17 in levels, and right now the core is dropping, and this is game as Team Expert, with a fantastic draft, are taking the lead in the series against Team Zealot. Yeah, just a bit too controlled there. There was a moment where Zealot at 16 to 20, their last attempt to even come back in the game needed to be a last-ditch effort, where they just beeline across the map. But with Medivh floating above them, you could tell they were scared such fearful of going in for that engage, because they knew that Team Expert could play around it with complete control with Poke and Illidan, to a point where Zealous just went for the all-in on the Punisher and got picked off. I mean, I'm just saying it flat out. I think Abatha as a ban was a massive mistake. Either you ban ETC, or you ban out Medivh, but you can't simply just give both of them over right at the beginning of the draft to a team that is notorious for using both of these heroes. Abatha would have maybe been a strong argument in favor of Expert if they pick him, but giving ETC and Medivh over was even worse. Yep. And just to underline that again, we have the last team fight, so let's take another closer look at them.
This was the uh, team fight at the very north here, 20 to 16. And look at the controls. So long as Sans controlling the bush on the right side, Medivh in the top right. And here's the thing, ADRD can go in for poke because Bad Benny is there to help him out. The moment that the engage comes in from Garrosh, Bad Benny power slides, Hunt comes out, Aegis is forced to be utilized, and you see the mages on the backside, they're in complete safety right now. Yeah, there comes the mosh pit immediately. So they are going in against Garrosh and two of us moves in. And then we have the portal. And with that portal, they can once again go straight into just the safety can move into the back if they want to. They are, we're going to see another portal from AD already any second to just force the issue even more. And in the meantime, Zealots can't even run away. They know they have to at least fight for the Punisher and win it, and then save a few of the targets, but they can't even accomplish that. It's just this game has completely turned against them. They had no chance there. The draft alone was extremely strong four-team expert, and the Zealots just had no tools in their lineup. So going into game number two, I want a Medivh ban, period, against Team Expert. That's what you have to have here. Even looking at this draft, Dahaka being banned out, if you ban out ETC, if you ban out any member here, you have members on Zealots that actually can play the Abathur if it were to be left open, if they were to grab Medivh first, or if they were to grab the ETC instead. You have options. If you take away the Abathur, you pick up the ETC. Mafio is a king on ETC. It's one of his best heroes to play here. Just flay around the draft a little bit more. Don't worry about that Abathur so much. I'm still blown away that after ETC, first of all, the Abathur pick, I, as I explained, just for the reasons mentioned, that didn't make a lot of sense considering what was still up. Then ETC is taken. And the second ETC is taken, you immediately know what they're thinking about. Yeah. The chances that Expert picks Medivh are incredibly high. <laughs> yes. It's like 100%. There are, there are other options for them, but... Given their history, given that you already have the follow-up for the Leyline Seal, Mediv is just, I mean, that pick is so obvious. And you could see Zealots hesitate a little bit. And I think at that moment, they might have been thinking about picking Mediv for themselves. Mm -hmm. But not doing that and just heading everything over to the opponent, that was a bit suicidal. And that's exactly what was reflected in the game itself. So uh, right now, I believe that this is a bit of a wake-up call for Zealots. I would be very surprised if we don't see different drafting from then heading into game number yeah, two. Yeah, there's definitely some redemption here going into game number two. They can switch up their drafts. But one of our favorite things to do here at the HEC is player comparisons. Let's check out some of our players and get a feel for how they differ, how they're different, what they do very similar when it comes to the matchups. As Team Expert and Team Zelt are facing off, let's look at Zarmini and a Thorough Angel. Yeah, the first thing that immediately comes to mind is uh, that uh, Zarmini is a lot more handsome than a Thorough Angel. <laughs> a Thorough Angel. Nailed it. Ethereum is a little bit orange. Yeah, he's a little bit orange there. Needs to work on his logo a little bit, maybe get some more mixes up. Uh, I don't want to see. These are matchups, too, that I look at that I think if you... There's a there's a factor that is not being shown on the screen, and that's that Ethereum Angel plays a wide variety of heroes. Zarmi plays a lot of Dahaka, and that's very displayed here. His takedowns are very high. He comes in for the rotations and help us fight. Also, the hero damage a little bit more, but the siege damage for Ethereum Angel on that Illidan spikes up a little bit more. He's been playing a lot of Illidan in the past. I'm actually blown away how similar these stats are. Yeah. I did not expect it to be this close. I mean, just look at the KDA ratio. Death's kill participation is identical. So... Uh, I would have expected a hero to uh, heavily dominate that mm -hmm. matchup here. So I must say, Zarmini underestimated him a bit. I do think uh, Zarmini is one that can be targeted. I want to see it more from teams where you try to get out the Dahaka and that Sonya, the two that he goes to right away, and see what he adjusts to. In the past, we've seen him go on top of an Anubarak, but when you allow him to be comfortable and play the heroes that he does play, the Dahakas and the Sonyas, he's hanging out with the likes of someone like a Thoreau in I terms mean, of stats. Zarmini has actually been uh, criticized by other teams in the past quite a bit. Not to an extent where they were blaming him for loss or anything, but where they said, yeah, he needs to step it up. And recently, when you talk to teams, usually most of them mentioned that they feel Zarmini is one of the players that thanks to the regular HTC practice has improved a lot and that's reflected in these stats and again I have to say I did not expect him to just be absolutely on par with the Thera Angel here so that was pretty impressive. We'll see if Expert intends to target Zarmini or if any other teams do do that in the future. But for now, Zarmini and crew are looking pretty darn good. Remember, they are on a three-game win streak here in the HGC. But so far, Team Expert in game number one of this best of five series really put on full display just how much they can outclass their opponent if they're given the tools that they are known for. Yeah, I mean, Expert had... Again, it comes down to the draft for me. They had a very cool draft. It was also... A comfortable draft for them, where they were on uh, heroes that they absolutely love to play. So, mm -hmm. expert with the win, and I guess we are ready for map two. Let's do it. Battleground, game number yeah. two. Where are we going? 
between our teams. It's going to be BOE as Expert gets a pick. Zealot will take first. All right, so BOE, we have actually seen uh, a lot of cool strategies here. Keep in mind that Taranda is now back. And she's not really a hero that every team is going to pick. She's not a hero that we are going to see on every single battleground. But Battlefield of Eternity is definitely one of the battlegrounds where she is going to be a little bit more common thanks to her trait, which interacts, of course, with the objective as well. So that's a hero that we might see here now. But we'll find out. Yeah, I hope so. I was speaking to ADRD this last week as we got prepped for these matches, he mentioned that they have been getting a little bit more creative as of late, going back to the roots of being experimental. And so he mentioned that there is some crazy stuff that we could see this weekend. Maybe we'll see it here on BOE, maybe not. Saranda could be one of those heroes that does become under that umbrella of crazy. Uh, but it is kind of interesting to see how much Tirana got mixed in yesterday during the uh, matches that we saw. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I would not really mix Tirana in the crazy back just yet. That's reserved for your Chogal, your Gazlo, Murky. It's basically Trixler heroes that we find in there. <laughs> um, Tiranda is actually solid now, especially with that cooldown reduction that she now has on level 13. The Owl build with talents on 1 and 13 can dish out insane damage towards the late game. And even before those changes, we have seen teams dabble a little bit in Tyrande, but ever since then, she has made a bigger appearance, and I think that's going to continue. Yeah. She's not going to be uh, one of those heroes you're going to see in every single draft on every single map, but I think she will be picked up more frequently. For those wondering why she's good on BOE, Hunter Mark it does apply to the Immortal, which is going to help you burn it down. Also, the Owl build that Kaldor was mentioning, I have yet to be able to dabble on it, but I really want to play it. It sounds amazing. Yeah, it's just always a bit frightening when you... I've watched a lot of scrims from players that we've already seen on Taranda that get 80, 90 stacks in a normal game, and then I'm there always thinking is. about, well, not quite sure if I'm able to keep up with that to get that same damage output, but it's pretty impressive when you see a pro with, uh, like, good hits on the skill shots being able to play her. But yeah, you just mentioned it. There it is, the ban on Medivh. There's a reason why Medivh gets banned against Team Expert, and Zealots, they thought, you know what? We can actually deal with ADRD's Medivh. And they were wrong. So now yep. they accept that, and there we have the ban. This makes me happy. Some teams get really stubborn and decide that they don't want to ban out a problem hero because they think they can adjust their draft a lot. And sometimes that does work, but sometimes you just have to give in and be like, you know what? Your Medivh is kind of yeah. good, and just deal with it. The thing is, I would have been okay with them letting Medivh slide through in the last draft if they at least ban ETC. It was for me like a. It's definitely like a two-step process here. Yeah. If you let Medivh through, at least make sure that he doesn't get the best combo, but then there's always the argument to be had, what if instead of ETC they pick Diablo and uh, try mm. to use the um, Leyline Seal Apocalypse combo. Be it as it may, we don't have to deal with that in our second game because we already see the ban on Medivh. Now we're heading into the ban for Team Expert and it is going to be Lunara. So already eliminating some of the poke. It's actually interesting because I'm currently questioning if that is leading us to a different healer choice. We'll have to see here. It does, regardless, the first step about this ban in particular is it leaves open the ETC and the Dahaka. Dahaka falling off a little bit on BOE, but still one that we see get picked off sometimes. It makes it a little bit more impactful that when you come in for the Brush Shock, you got to make sure you get those engages. But leaving up the two powerhouses that are currently in Europe, not a bad play for Team Expert. It allows for them to adjust their draft based on what is still available after Zealots. Go for the first pick. Yeah, so we have the Cow King on uh, the first pick position.